So we are celebrating one year of RV life. And with almost 3,000 miles logged, we have learned some lessons this year. Hi, I'm Katie. And I'm Scott. And a couple years ago, we gave up our single parent lifestyle when we fell in love, got married, and had a baby. And now while most of our friends are celebrating empty nests, we're starting over, but this time we'll be older and wiser. Hopefully. Hopefully. Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk about the lessons that we've learned in the first year of RVing. We've logged 3,000 miles. Almost 3,000 miles, yeah. And how many days out? Oh my gosh, almost 40 days, I think. Almost 40 days out, which doesn't sound like a lot, but for part-timers, especially in our first year, I think it's, it's a lot. I think we can brag about that one. A little bit. I mean, next year, we're going <laughs> a little bigger. We're going to spend um, 30 days out just in one go as we go to Canada Canada, <laughs> um, and then the Upper Peninsula and then back into Minnesota. So that'll be exciting. We'll talk about that later, but we're here to talk about everything that we learned this year and man, we've learned a lot. We sure have. So I don't think all the research that we did fully prepared us, but making a lot of mistakes did. <laughs> right, right. The, the failures out there are what really leads to those lessons that, that sink home. Um, we started in October of last year, of 2018. Um, we bought our trailer. Yep. We took it out for the very first time. Um, in, in October. Yes, in the rain and the cold and the misery. And, and um, you know, it was one of those experiences that really tested us. Yes. As far as, do you really want to be doing this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and even though it was cold and wet and, and we ran out of propane that first night, Mm -hmm. Or no, the second night there, we ran out of propane. Yeah. So we drained an entire tank. Can't run your furnace in your RV like you can at home. Just no. Keep no. that in mind. Get a space <laughs> heater. Yes. Um, yes, this year we have a space heater or, oh. and the electric blanket. Yeah. So that has done wonders for fall and spring camping. Yes, it's been a lifesaver. So that's lesson number one. Yes. Is your RV operates completely differently your then house. your sticks and bricks. Yep. So, um, you know, and that seems obvious in retrospect, but you don't think about it like the running the heater, mm -hmm. right? Um, water consumption. You're what you've really got to watch your water consumption, especially if you're not on a full hookup site. Yes. Um, so you have to pay attention to that kind of stuff. Another thing that I learned this year was, you know, when we are hooking up, I'm the one outside, um, directing Scott in the truck. And I always check the, the doors to make sure that they're closed and locked and check to make sure that the brake lights are all working and the blinkers and all that fun stuff. Well, this year I learned that you need to do all of those things and you need to check all of your covers. So it was the hot water tank cover. I did not check it. It was loose and it came off while we were driving down the highway and it was gone. There was not much left. Lesson learned. Lesson learned. <laughs> Check everything that could open or fall off of your RV before you get on the road. And we had two issues. Other than that, we've had two other issues with water heaters this year. Mm -hmm. um, the first one was our very first trip out. Yes. We didn't have hot water. Yep. And it turns out when, so we actually had somebody else unwinterize it mm -hmm. because we didn't have access to be able to flush the lines and all that stuff. Yeah. Well, they, there's a bypass valve there on the hot water heater, um, right there at the tank. There's a bypass valve that gets turned off, and um, or I guess it gets turned on because mm -hmm. it's bypassed. And, and anyway, it doesn't allow water into the tank to get heated. So we figured that out through the, the miracle of the internet. Yes, it's a good thing we had connection. <laughs> right, right. So that was lesson number one with the water heater. Mm -hmm. Numero two was we had a leak. Um, not so much a lesson as a, a good reminder to keep an eye on all your water connections, look for pooling water, things like that. You found that one. I did. And to keep a small toolkit with you. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we have one that we bought on Amazon. It, it has a little bit of everything in it. It's perfect. It doesn't take up much space and it has almost everything that you would need to do an on the spot repair. Which reminds me, another thing that you may want to keep a duplicate of is the bar. I don't right. know what it's called. 
I don't know if it even has a name. It does. Remember, we looked it up. I can't remember. And I, I can't that. remember it right now, but I'll I'll put the name up there. And um, basically, if you have a weight distribution, um, if you have a pull behind a bumper pull trailer, and you have um, a weight distribution system on the back that's got the chains that link um, uh, that link onto to your trailer from the hitch. Mm -hmm. You have a, that little bar that you use to to lift those up into place and to bring them back down. Well. We got to unhitching one day and, and just trying to get home after a long weekend. I put that thing up on the back of the truck and I drove off. <laughs> and it was gone. It was gone. We decided to get two more so that we could... Just in case it ever happened yes, again. Yes, one in the trailer, one in the truck. So we just had them. And they were like 30 bucks a piece. Yeah. So don't lose them. Don't lose them. <laughs> so that leads right into have a checklist. Right, when you're setting up, when you're breaking down, when you're hitching up and, and you're unhitching, have a checklist of things that you need to go through. Yeah. And double check it. Have your partner double check it. Yes. Um, your partner, it's easy we found for you and your partner to fall into specific roles, mm -hmm. whatever that happens to be. And that's a mistake. We're very, very guilty of that this season. And next year, you are going to do a lot more driving. Yes. You're going to do a lot more hitching up yep. and you're going to do a lot more setting up camp. Yes. So hooking up all the connections, the sewer and all those things, because it's important. I am excited about almost all of those things. <laughs> <laughs> the sewer, right? Right. right. Yeah. When you start out RVing, it's easy to get a little intimidated and scared. Um, I know I absolutely was. I was terrified to tow the trailer behind us. Especially because we didn't get a very small one. It's no. not massive. It's a, um, I think total it's 33 and a half feet long. Mm -hmm. And, but that's enough for me. Somebody that's used to driving small cars and now all of a sudden I have this giant pickup truck and this big trailer and we're towing it around and um, it's intimidating. I and I watched, yeah, I watched a lot of YouTube videos on how to do it. Um, I, I got a lot of advice and really, um, if you're in the boat that I was in a year ago, just practice. Get out there and practice. Because once you get past that initial fear, once you kind of break through that, that first toe or two, you realize that it's really not that bad. As long as you have prepared for, you know, having a lot of extra vehicle behind you, um, which means you have to watch your turns a little bit better, you have to brake a little bit sooner, and just take the whole thing slower. But getting out there and practicing is really going to help. Just taking it to the, the dealer and back, maybe just driving it down the road. Um, I'm planning on doing donuts in a parking lot. Donuts in a parking lot. That's how I'm gonna learn. Right. So. That's gonna be awesome. <laughs> yeah. Next video. <laughs> Next video, Katie gets arrested. Uh, no. And, <laughs> and so towing was the big scare for me, but then backing up too, right? Like I, I'm sitting here thinking that, that, that all these campers out here, we're going to pull into a, a, a campground and we're going to try backing in and it's going to take me a, a hundred thousand times and they're going to, ah, you know, look at this noob. <laughs> <laughs> but nobody really did that, that no. I was aware of. So we learned a lot about, about backing up, a lot of how angles work in reverse. And, yes. And we worked as a team. Um, yeah. We learned a lot about how to communicate better. Yes. Um, under those kind of stressful situations. Yeah. So along with the towing, once we got the towing conquered, mm -hmm. once we got the backup conquered, maybe not conquered, but more comfortable with, right? Right, right. Um, the next fear was gas stations. And I avoided them at all costs <laughs> yes. when the trailer was hooked up. Yes. Um, you know, because they're they're tight and they're cramped and, and you just, I don't know, I, I wasn't feeling I was there yet with the skill. So, and that was okay because most of our trips were a half gallon or a half tank of gas or, or less. <laughs> right. We didn't venture too terribly far. No. <laughs> um, until we went to Arkansas. And then I was still so, so petrified of going to the gas station that uh, we planned around it by boondocking one night. Mm -hmm. um, we dropped the trailer um, at the boondocking site, went and got gas for the next day, mm -hmm. and came back and hooked it back up for the night and, and slept and did our thing. And we planned that boondocking site specifically at, to be about three quarters of a tank away <laughs> from the park, or, or from our house, yeah. so that we wouldn't have to, 
to fill up. Yeah, but we decided to stay an extra day in Arkansas, mm -hmm. so we were going to drive straight back. And yep. that meant stopping at a gas station while hitched up. Yes. The plan was we were going to take it easy first and yes. go to a truck stop and go through the truck lanes. And um, that's a little intimidating. Those trucks are a lot bigger than we are. Uh -huh. um, but it was it was nice. It was super cool. Everybody was nice about it. Um, I, we didn't have a card. So a lot of the, the truck places require some kind of a card to start the commercial pumps. Mm -hmm. So you need to look into that if that's something that you're going to be using. Because we had to go in and walk inside and come back out, uh, walk inside to pay and then come back out and pump the fuel. And that takes a little extra time and those truckers are in a hurry. And you want to be polite and get out of their way. Right. Um, so that's something else to think about. But it, but it worked out really well. Mm -hmm. Except for the fact that I miscalculated when we should stop. Just and, a little bit. Yes. And we ended up having to stop again at a little town about 60 miles from home. Mm -hmm. And ended up getting into a pretty tight gas station. <laughs> Um, but it, it worked out okay. Uh, we did, Katie did jump out of the, out of the truck to make sure we didn't, um, yes. come around and, and tail swing the concrete pillars there by the fuel pumps. It was tricky. It was. It was very close. Right. We got out of there feeling very triumphant and got stuck in a neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, plan your gas station trips and plan your route. <laughs> yes. Especially if you're not super comfortable with what you're towing, like we weren't. So we did buy a lot of gear this year. It was you, it was you. Some of it worked out, some of it didn't. Um, we'll put the links to those videos below, so check them out. Yeah, uh, it's easy to get intimidated with all the gear that you'll need, especially starting up. Uh, we absolutely did. Uh, so hopefully, you know, doing that kind of research, watching those kind of videos will help you figure out what you can do to save some money and not, not waste. <laughs> <laughs> not buy too much gear or, or gear that maybe you don't need. Yeah. Don't get caught up in the shiny. There's also a lot of services out there and it'll, it's easy to get lost in what is good and what isn't good. We went with a handful. Um, we chose Boondockers Welcome to do boondocking. Yes. Which worked out well. I wish we would have used it a little bit more. We only used it once, but it was still worth the $30 fee. Yeah. Um, we went with Good Sam. Uh, we did a three-year membership with them. It was $75, but we got a $50 gift certificate to Camping World and Gander Outdoors. Mm -hmm. um, with that, you get like 10% off. You get propane discounts, discounts on um, dump station services, discounts on fuel. Yeah. Um, it is absolutely paid for itself mm -hmm. um, three or four times over yeah. at this point. So that's something we'll keep for sure. Yes, that was a winner. Yep. And there's a lot of roadside assistance um, services as well. We did end up going with one with the Good Sam one. We didn't use it, uh, which is really better to not have to use it. But at the same time, when I sat down and looked at the features or, or what it offered, it was the same thing that our insurance RV roadside assistance mm -hmm. covered, which we already paid for. So make sure that you're not getting uh, redundant services. So all in all, the biggest lesson that we can pass on to you is take your time and do your research. Um, you're really not in any hurry to get in anywhere. You're not going to be an expert the first time out and neither was anybody else. So get that out of your head and go have fun with it. Um, I think by the end of the season, that's, that's our biggest takeaway. Mm -hmm. um, and we failed a lot over the season. And that's how we learned to yes, failure, right? Absolutely. So go back and check out all of our season one videos. In every single one, we did something unsmart. <laughs> <laughs> something we happened. Yeah, we, we goofed. goofed. Up. We failed. We learned. We learned. Yes. That's what it was. Every single session we learned. And it's also kind of fun to look back on um, you can see how we grew as a channel, mm -hmm. as as creators, as as videographers, as documentarians of our journey um those first couple videos were rough they're were rough. rough yeah but that's okay right because we're still learning at this too it's everything's a learning process so let us know below in the comments if you had any lessons that you learned when you first started camping things that you'd like to pass along to us and everybody else out there or if you are just starting out you're thinking about camping you just bought your first trailer and you're and you haven't started yet what are you scared of 
Let us know below because I promise you we were probably scared of the same thing. And we'd be happy to give you some advice on how we got through it. Yeah. And um, maybe subscribe. Click the little bell icon. We have so much coming up. Um, season two is going to be awesome. Yes. We are going to be going to Canada. Mm -hmm. So excited about that. And we've just got a lot of fun stuff planned. So we want you to come along with us. So thanks for tuning in, guys. We will catch you next week.